uh, basically, I was uh, scouring uh, YouTube and I came across a clip from TYT. This is back in 2014 during the uh, invasion of Gaza by Israel. So you remember they invaded um, Gaza from uh, July 7th until August 26th, I think. Those are the exact dates. So um, seven weeks, essentially. And uh, this was I mean, horrific, right? You had around 2,252 casualties on the Palestinian side. 65% of them were civilians. 25% were children killed. You had 1,000 children left with permanent disabilities. Um, the Israelis, they sustained 67 uh, casualties that were all soldiers. And six civilian casualties. One of them was not even Israeli. It was from Thailand, I think. So, I mean, 67 plus, plus 6, that's 73. So, you have an 8% civilian um, casualty rate, 8% on the Israeli side, and on the Palestinian side, 65%. 8%, 65%. Now, you can look at those figures, and you tell me which one is, is on purpose, which one is deliberate, and which one is accidental or, or collateral. Uh, not that, again, not that collateral uh, is, is in any way exactly acceptable or nice, but, uh, you know, my point here is that you always hear that, oh, the Palestinians, they use human shields, they target civilian, they, tar they target, uh, you know, uh, uh, Israeli civilians. Really? The, the statistics don't say that. You are targeting civilians. The UN report, it, I mean, it, it made me want to puke. I, I couldn't, you, you read one page. Again, the, the report is hundreds of, of pages long. You read one page and there are so many casualties you cannot keep up. It's like uh, a family's having dinner and then all of a sudden the, the, the ground just swallows them up and the guy wakes up in hospital and, you know, they tell him his wife has died, his kids have died, his, all his relatives that were in the second floor have died. And you, you, I mean, it's just horrific. And the United Nations, everyone knows, not just the United Nations, but they, they declared that Israel was deliberately targeting residential buildings most people who died in that seven week war were either near their homes or in their homes okay so this was operation protective edge now all all of this to say that i came across tyt's coverage of this and for some reason they've called it battlefield gaza now don't get me wrong i love the battlefield series okay i've been playing that that series since i was a kid but this is kind of cringe like I, it's not a video game uh it's it's really not a video game i mean like could, could you imagine <laughs> Uh, could you imagine that in any other context? Just no. Uh, anyway, that's not the point here. I just want to play a bit of the. Uh, I just want to analyze this. And again, I know this is old, but but nonetheless, um, it's it's still relevant because uh, the ICC, uh, as you, you you know, just a few weeks ago, says it wants to investigate these war crimes. So it's very relevant. Seventy-two hour ceasefire. Now both sides swear up and down that the other side broke the ceasefire, uh, but it looks like there was the people coming out of the tunnels. Uh, an hour after the ceasefire was declared, uh, if in fact it was Hamas, as we suspect, based on the evidence that we read here, just ridiculous. You've got 72 hours to clean up the dead. Are you insane? What are you breaking a ceasefire for? You're, you're the one getting mauled out there, but but this goes to the point that a lot of is, uh, Israeli supporters make, which is, well, they don't mind uh, those images on the screens, so they're not going to listen to a ceasefire, so that there are more of those images on the screens. And so there is significant culpability here for Hamas in this instance to break what would have been a great ceasefire for 72 hours that allowed people to find their homes, their belongings, their family members, etc. Now, uh, on the other hand, I've seen the captured soldier being portrayed as like, oh my God, you see how violent and terrorist Hamas is? Well, they're in the middle of a war. They've killed 63 Israeli soldiers, and the Israelis have killed hundreds of Palestinian fighters. That's kind of what happens in war. So I feel terrible for him. He's a 23-year-old. He's got a baby at home. I mean, it's terrifying, but that he's a soldier. Well, Jake, I agree with everything you've said so far. <laughs> Okay, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I, love how, I love how he's like making the case, that the, the argument that the Israelis use, like, look, man, these Palestinians, they just don't know when to fucking quit. Let's go and kill more of them. Maybe then they'll learn their fucking lesson. Holy shit. Listen to your fucking self. What are you saying? Could you imagine the same kind of like logic in any other any other uh, um, situation? Let, 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 let's try another analogy. For example, uh, this is like, you know, could you imagine... Uh, the cops in, in the U.S. going, man, you know, these black people, they just, 
they just uh, won't accept our police brutality. Maybe if we keep, keep on brutalizing more black people and we keep on showing images of black people being brutalized, then they'll stop harassing cops. What the fuck? Do you, do you realize how fucked up you sound? You're, you're saying that Palestinians have to just accept being occupied and bombed and brutalized until they learn their lesson? What, what kind of a fucking argument is that? This is an asymmetrical warfare we're talking about. Israel has an air force. Israel has fucking nukes. Israel receives billions of dollars of military aid every year from the United States. What the fuck do Palestinians have? Rocks? <laughs> Some homemade rockets? Get the hell out of here. And you, you, you realize how he says, oh, the Israelis have soldiers. Palestinians have fighters, right? Like, well, it's true in, in, in one sense. You know, the Israelis have a conventional armed forces. It's true, right? And that's why it's, it's very asymmetrical. But he says fighters. Like, oh, these are just, you know, they're a bunch of militants. He's, he's never going to use the, the reality of it. He's never going to talk about the fact that they're resisting an occupation, right? For example, if you talk about the French resistance in World War II, you know, you talk about it as a resistance. There's a clear relationship. You have the occupiers, the Nazis occupying France, and you have the French resisting the, the occupation. They're never going to talk about it as an occupation because then it delegitimizes the state of Israel. We can't have that, can we? Right? And you see how they try to compare it like it's a, a, an even playing field? It's not an even fucking playing field. Okay? It's, it's, uh, sorry, it's not a level playing field. That is the whole point of the fucking occupation that no one wants to address. That's how they sugarcoat it. That's how they, they make people think that, oh yeah, it's, it's equal, right? These are just two factions, two parties, two sides, two adversaries battling it out. No, it's not. It's a fucking military occupation and a very brutal one at that. And then the, the, at the very end, oh man, look, he, he's got a baby at home. And by the way, he got it wrong. It turns out he, was, he has a fiancé, not a baby. Like, Cenk is, so, Cenk is so desperate to defend some random fucking IDF soldier who's occupying Palestinians and murdering Palestinians. You know, 65% of those casualties were Palestinians. That he's, he literally doesn't even know what the fuck he's talking about. Like, oh, no, you know, he has a baby. Oh, no, it's a fiancé. It's something. Just, I want, feel empathy for the occupier. Feel empathy for him. Look, he is a human being. Wow, amazing. I, I, love, I love it when, when you rehabilitate war criminals and, and illegal settlers and occupiers. Good job. Very progressive of you. <laughs> Very fucking progressive of you. That they would have gotten on better terms where the tunnels weren't going to be allowed to still be destroyed. So they obviously were degraded to the point where they had to agree to something that they didn't want to agree to in the first place. So, so that's one point. Uh, and it sounds like even Obama said today that Hamas did break the ceasefire. So that's, that's two things. That um, I can't remember where we stopped just now. I think it was here, yeah. Anyone can say, well, you guys never believe the government, so why do you believe the government now? But I think for every story that we ever do, occasionally you gotta pick something to believe, right? I mean, yes, I think the government lies all the time, but you gotta, there's some, you know, we got 72 hour ceasefire. That, that's amazing, do you see that? Yes, we can't trust the government, the government are liars, but when, when it comes to Israel, now I believe them. Amazing. Amazing how that works, right? You know, the government are liars. You can't trust the government. But when the government, when the U.S. government says that Israel is not the one who broke the ceasefire, it's all the, it's the Palestinians' fault, now we believe them. We, you know, we gotta pick something to believe. Come on. Better it be for Israel. Holy shit. <laughs> These people are fucking unbelievable. By the way, do you notice Jimmy Dore in the background? He's just like... What the fuck am I doing here? Look, 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 at, look at Jimmy's face. And I, I, I seriously... I, I relate to him so hard. Look, look at his face. He just can't believe that these morons next to him are spouting all this nonsense. Uh, oh, I feel your pain, Jimmy. I really do. It's 60 or something like that. Well, I want to agree to in the first place. There's some, you know, we got a lot of paper here and sometimes you got to believe something. So, uh, yes, it's really shitty. I don't feel any worse for the, the soldier or his family than anyone else that's died on the other side, um, but I, I do agree with the original point you made about what the Israeli narrative is, which is, what, what can they do? What can they do? They are in war. So when we show numbers, uh, you know, whatever it was, 1600 versus 60 or something like that, well, in the last eight years, they've invested in the Iron Dome, which has saved their people. And not only has the Iron Dome saved their people, the Iron Dome has actually saved Palestinians, because think about it, if the Iron Dome wasn't there and these rockets were all landing, well, if you think Israel's response is harsh now, 
Well, just imagine how much harsher it would be if these rockets were landing. So the Iron Dome has saved lives on both sides. I, I think that we can say that. Holy shit. D did you hear what he just said? Ah! Uh, what is wrong with you? Holy shit. He's saying Palestinians should be thankful that Israel is illegally occupying them because the Israelis have put up a state-of-the-art missile defense system that can shoot down Palestinian rockets that may have potentially fallen on them. Wow. So by, by your logic, you know, maybe the French, particularly ones who lived in Normandy, Right. Or actually, I mean, anywhere on, co on, on, on uh, you know, coastal uh, mainland Europe, they, they should have thanked the Germans. They should thank the, uh, the Nazis for putting up the Atlantic Wall to save them, you know, from um, the Allied invasion or Allied, uh, uh, art, you know, um, cannons on their on their ships during D-Day or wh whatever. You know, they should thank them for all these various 88 millimeter uh, flak cannons shooting down all of these B-17s. Right. Or these Lancaster bombers coming to bomb the Nazis because some of those bombs might have fallen on them. Yeah, wow, that's sound logic. Every, every person living under occupation should thank their occupiers for defending them from people trying to liberate them. <laughs> what the fuck? Holy shit. Holy shit. I mean, how these people just casually advocate for, for you know, ethnic cleansing and, and military occupation, it's fucking unbelievable. It's unbelievable. empirically there are tunnels literally being dug i mean imagine think about the distances that we're talking about this whole country is the size of new jersey uh so imagine if from where you live to this studio which is not that far six seven miles people were digging tunnels now again we can go to the mm -hmm. who was right who was there first who you know all of that but what would any democratic nation do what would any any society what their job is is to protect their civilians and as jimmy and i were talking about before this may not ultimately in the long term maybe this won't uh, be good for Israel because maybe they're breeding many more Hamas-like people. So I think that's a legitimate argument. Yeah, man. You know, Israel is, is a total democracy, right? Just ignore all the apartheid stuff and, you know, the different laws for Palestinians and the illegal occupation of the West Bank and, you know, the illegal occupation of Gaza Strip, the siege, the illegal occupation of the Syrian Golan Heights, the illegal occupation of East Jerusalem. Uh, no, yeah, just ignore all that. They're a total democracy, of course, you know? Yeah, yeah of course. Palestinians are treated equally. <laughs> wow, yeah. And by the way, even if everything I said were, were not true, even if, if Israel was like the quintessential democracy in his, in his fantasy land, apparently for him, that gives them the right to just disproportionately murder Palestinian civilians. He's, t he's telling you that he's seen the figures that I just cited to you, right? So this is before the war was ended. This is August four, uh, 2nd, so a few weeks before it's over. 65% of the casualties were civilians, and you can already see from the figures, which, he's, which he talked about, right? They doubled by the time the war was over. And he's still making this argument. Look, Israel is a democracy, so, you know, if most of the people that kill are civilians, it's okay, because any democracy would do that. No, the fuck they would not. Okay? That's not defending yourself. When 65% of the people being killed are civilians, that is not defending yourself. That's a fucking bloodbath. That's a massacre. That's... Those are war crimes. Do you understand that? And that's why the International Criminal Court is going to investigate them, because they're fucking war crimes. Do you understand that? When you're targeting residential buildings on purpose, those are war crimes. I don't care if you're a fucking democracy or, you know, a <laughs> constitutional monarchy or a totalitarian uh, fuck festival. You are targeting civilians. That's not defending yourself. That's a bloodbath. That's a massacre. You fucking piece of shit. What, what is Zionist cuck? That's what Dave Rubin is. He is a Zionist cuck. He's a cuck eunuch for the Zionist occupation. Argument. I think they, um, if there were tunnels, right, we what, start bombing schools. I think that's what you do. Well, no, but what <laughs> would you... God, why, this is why I love Jimmy. You see, you see, yeah, pa Palestinians dig tunnels, let's bomb schools. Yeah, of course, that's the rational response. Any democracy would do that, right? <laughs> oh, God. It, it, it's like talking to a wall with these people, right? I don't know how Jimmy tolerated that for 40 minutes. The video is like 39 minutes long. Um,
Christ Almighty. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's frankly unbelievable, right? And I think the way they rationalize this to, to themselves is, is deep down they really believe that, you know, like Palestinians are lesser beings, right? Because he's, he's just openly saying like, yeah, all of these, I recognize the facts. I see that Palestinians are being disproportionately killed. And nonetheless, I still think it's okay. How, how could you rationalize that? Only, only someone who thinks that Palestinians are not equal human beings could rationalize that and accept that. I mean, this is fundamentally evil. Fundamentally evil. Fucking nuts, man. Truly. And, you know, speaking of schools, there's one instance, um, the, uh, the Israelis, they bombed a UN uh, school that was being, uh, sorry, a school that was being used as a shelter by the UN, right? So they had uh, 200 children wounded, 15 children killed. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine like a, a school in the, in the United States, for example, being bombed by another country? You have 200 children wounded, 15 children killed. Can you imagine that in the United States? Would you accept that? That's, that was one instance during that seven week period alone. Okay. There were other schools also bombed, other UN installations bombed. The United Nations, 118 United Nations installations were bombed. They're deliberately targeting, targeting journalists, targeting medics. That's not me saying this. This is the United Nations saying this is all the, the relief organizations on the ground saying this is all documented. You, you, you can't change that. It's not defense. It's, it's a massacre, right? Unbelievable. This is shameful. It's, it's really disgusting. So that's all I watched from this video because I'm going to vomit if I watch anymore. So I just wanted to... Again, I, I, I was um, just, just uh, bringing this up again because, as I said, the ICC, they've extended their jurisdiction to the Palestinian territories. And, you know, the way that the Rome Statute works, the Rome Statute is the treaty that formed the International Criminal Court. The way it works is that even if um, the aggressor, so in this case Israel, is not a party to the Rome Statute, remember they signed it and then pulled out. They thought they were being smart because they thought, oh, Palestine is not a state. They'll never get um, into the Rome statute. Well, it turns out that backfired because even if the aggressor is not a party to the Rome statute, if the victim is, the ICC has jurisdiction, right? So, for example, in the case of Afghanistan, you saw last year Donald Trump and his scumbag administration with Pompeo. They sanctioned um, the chief prosecutor, uh, Fatou Ben Souda, and the head of the jurisdiction, um, Ficasso Mochochoco. And... They are not allowed to travel to the United States. They've been uh, placed under sanctions. You know, they, they basically restricted their movement to prevent them from investigating war crimes committed by the United States in Afghanistan. Even though the United States is not a party to the Rome Statute, unsurprisingly, but Afghanistan is. And since Afghanistan is the victim in this case, ICC has jurisdiction, right? So that's why Israel is up in arms because they thought, well, if we get out of the Rome, the Rome Statute, then the ICC can not investigate us because Palestine is technically not a state um, uh, recognized by the UN. And, uh, you know, that way we'll, ne we'll never be held accountable. We can escape accountability for war crimes, crimes of aggression, crimes against humanity and genocide, because those are the four main um, uh, crimes that the ICC covers. Uh, and so, yeah, well, the ICC just decided that, yeah, their jurisdiction does extend to Palestine. To, to the occupied territories. And, um, you know, you have three criteria to open an investigation. It's basically one that uh, um, the SEC uh, basically, you know, th this would be good for justice, that the evident, evidence holds up, that you can actually build a solid case for it. And uh, if my memory serves me correctly, it is, it's the jurisdiction issue. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so you know, it, it's it's universally recognized there's a universal consensus that operation protective edge this is 2014 was a massacre and if you you go look at operation cast lead in 20, 2009 also a massacre and you know it, it's it's horrendous and this is not even counting the 70 years of occupation since 1948 of palestine i mean you have one million people um you know register one million people in israel registered as um as uh re refugees right since 1948. I th hold on. The total population, I think, of, Ar of Arab uh, Palestinians, 1.8 million. So I, you, you'll have to forgive me because um, it, it, it's quite late. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just not 
I'm just not remembering where they're registered as uh, this one million. Because uh, my point is that they're still registered as refugees from 1948. So you know, you know what that means? They're basically third, fourth generation Palestinians who are refugees on their own land. I mean, th this, is, this is insane, right? This is crazy. This is nuts. And um, this is not to mention the fact that you have uh, millions of Palestinians that are no longer in Palestine, right? You have millions in Syria, millions in Jordan, uh, millions uh, in, uh, outside the Middle East as well that were you know, expelled, that were kicked out of their homes. And, uh, you know, this has been going on for 70 years now. And so uh, earlier when Dave Rubin is saying, oh, this is not about who is here first and who is... What the... Dude, there are people still alive who were kicked out of their homes in 1948. They still have the fucking keys to their houses. What the fuck? Like, would you accept if I kicked you out of your fucking house? You would lose your shit. If someone did that to you, you would, you would, I mean, this motherfucker would never shut up. No one should. So why do you accept it for Palestinians? Weird. Anyway, I, I just wanted to go over that and <laughs> I think I'll end it on Jimmy's note, right? So there we go.